ever since we started buying third-party motors, we have been trying to evaluate their performance as well. While we could always relatively accurately determine some properties, like no load speed, we could not easily evaluate anything related to torque until recently. Initially, we tried to load the motors by lifting known weights. Uh, Philo had done this for at least some of his own tests, but we encountered a lot of limitations with our specific setup. For example, a motor might not reach its full speed during a run, or the speed computer might not measure it properly. Also, our weights and the speed computer itself had fairly poor resolution. Between the moderately successful static test for train poles and the less successful dynamometer car, we circled the actual solution without quite reaching it. These setups already measured the torque of steady state systems but not of the motors directly. We eventually realized we could distill these tests down into a prony brake. This is a device that loads motors directly with a literal brake. Uh, in this case, a felt pad pressing against an acrobat wheel. The braking force can be adjusted uh, here with a worm drive, can be measured uh, here with our scale, and then can be converted into torque using basic physics. We also need to measure RPM to plot a torque curve. For a long time, we used the speed computer, but it only has a 20 RPM resolution, despite having three poles per revolution. To address this, we bought a cheap infrared tachometer, which reads a piece of reflective tape stuck to an otherwise matte wheel. This should have more granularity and accuracy, despite having fewer poles per revolution. As for the actual test methodology, we ran each motor at full power on the speed regulator, a nominal 9 volts, and measured the speed in RPM at different torque levels. We put these points into Google Sheets uh, from which we can get a best fit line. This is the torque curve, and at least for this particular M motor, it very closely matches Philo's data. The second line shows the same curve if plotted with speed computer data. The delta, of course, comes from the inaccuracy of said device. This graph shows the extrapolated curves for the three common power functions motors. These actually complement each other fairly well with the XL motor having the best torque, the L motor having the best speed, and the M motor having the smallest size. Electric motors theoretically have a linear relationship between torque and speed, but in practice, other factors like current limits 
will prevent them from reaching the predicted stall torque. But wait, there's more. With these curves, we can directly infer another property of the motors, the output mechanical power. Multiplying the torque and speed, along with some constants for unit conversion, gives us the power in watts, which should peak at the middle of the torque range. This is absolutely original content. As far as we know, no one, not even Philo, has plotted some of these power curves, and definitely not together. Being derived from already extrapolated data makes them fairly theoretical, but they should also be reasonably accurate up to where the experimental data ends. But wait, there's still more. We still need to look at some powered up and control plus motors. And to keep things consistent with our earlier tests, we wanted to run everything at nine volts. We could not use our usual rechargeable batteries since they would not deliver enough voltage. And we did not want to use new alkalines since they would deliver inconsistent voltage as they drained and potentially through individual runs. Instead, we decided to make an adapter to run a city hub on mains power. This device consists of a nine volt transformer, a piece of wood and some nails, which ultimately contact the cradle pins in the hub. Throughout testing, the voltage reported by the city hub varied between 9.4 and 9.2 volts. The curves for the powered up and control plus motors kind of go all over the place. The We Do 2 motor performs similarly to a PFM motor, just worse. The medium linear motor pays a lot of performance to have an encoder, and the spike essentials motor pays even more performance to be kind of small. The two control plus motors seem to have very similar characteristics. Uh, why does the bulkier XL even exist? But wait, there's even more. Philo doesn't really comment on how many of each motor he tested or how many times he tested each motor, but we definitely wanted to try to understand the variance between different motors and different runs. To that extent, we tried at least three samples of each PF motor and used the best fit line to plot the final result. We tested three almost new XL motors and they all performed very similarly. We tested three lightly used L motors, and again, they all performed very similarly. We tested six M motors, three which we believed had lowish hours, and three which we believed had highish hours, and we ended up using the result from the former group as the latter group had much more variance. For the powered up motors, we took and averaged multiple samples where available. 
only the medium linear motor and the Control Plus XL motor have single samples. Four WeDo motors seem to cluster into two groups, uh, perhaps one with lower hours and one with higher hours, but this time we averaged all four results as the spread seemed much smaller than that of the M motors. Finally, we also ran some samples multiple times and found that these results did not vary much, even for the group of presumably older M motors, where performance varied a lot between different motors. In general, it seems like it's more useful to test more motors than to test motors more times. Except in the case of the not PFL motors. This is really the data we wanted to get all along, the performance for the third party options. We tested three not L motors, albeit not new ones, and the numbers varied wildly between individual samples and individual tests. One motor had an R squared value of less than 0.8 over three runs. Nonetheless, an average of all the data paints the picture that I already suspected. The not L motors are substantially more powerful than regular L motors. The one not XL motor we had also had more torque and power than its genuine counterpart. Due to the run variance of the not L motors, we did test the not XL multiple times, but it actually performed fairly consistently. We also tested the circuit cubes motors, though they run at four volts rather than the nine volts of everything else tested. I called this test definitive because I felt that after meandering here in the most indirect route possible, we finally tested enough motors enough times with an accurate enough setup to have torque and power numbers as legitimate as Philo's. But there's still so much more we could do. We haven't covered a lot of motors, uh, especially older ones, and we haven't done any measurement on the electrical side. Let us know in the comments what we should test next. Uh, this video is already way too long, but there will definitely be a second part eventually, and definitely with more than just additional motors. On that note, this is the end of this video. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do, and have a nice day.